Yes. Pour it out. Pour it out. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory. Yah, it's so good. It's so good. Hallelujah. On my hands. Yes, pour it out. On my feet. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, worship, worship, worship to the Almighty for His goodness and His mercy, His loving kindness, His tender mercies. Hallelujah. We need you. Hallelujah. I don't know about everybody else, but I need Him. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. If you need it, whisper and tell him, I need you. I need you. Every step I take. Hallelujah. Every breath I take. We need you. We can do nothing without you. Hallelujah. We can do nothing without you. Blessed be the name of the Most High. Hallelujah. 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 How many of y'all excited to know what you know in this day and time? Come on, how many of y'all are really excited? Glory! I'm excited. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, we've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. I know church folks have said that for years, but guess what? It's really true now. We've been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. And the world may not understand it. The church world may not understand it, but we understand it. Amen. We understand it. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father. Okay. We're going we're gonna to get into the word. We're going to get into the word. My wife probably going to sing again. Amen. And um, and like I said, when we finish, good to see you, uh, Sister Esther, and, and my brother here, <laughs> Brother Tyrone. Glory to God. Amen. We've been knowing each other a long time. <laughs> We've been in this a long time. We done been in this hotel many times, too, haven't we? <laughs> Hallelujah. This is not a new thing for us. Amen. But again, I want to greet everybody in the name of Yeshua. Uh, Hamashiach, and if you're new and you haven't signed in, please uh, sign in on the sign-in board and uh, just uh, print in, uh, your name and your uh, email if you like, and uh, so we can uh, touch bases with you if, you if you would like us to. Okay, so we're going to get into the Word, <clears throat> and um, I'm going to ask you to get your Bible if you have one, or your phone, you know, we might say get your phones now, because they're supposed to everybody look at their Bible on their phone. But uh, I want to go to 1 Timothy chapter 1 <clears throat> and verse 5 down to verse 8. And again, I want to welcome to you, uh, all of you to this Houston, Texas Shabbat Fellowship class. It's about fellowship because we all have obtained like precious faith. Amen. And the Most High has brought us all to a new awakening. Now, we are not talking about being awakened politically. Because you know there's a big thing out there now about being woke in the political world. But that's not what we're talking about. And a lot of people may not understand it. But how many of y'all know you don't have to explain everything to everybody? Amen. People don't think what they want to think. You know, and I am not interested in trying to prove nothing to nobody because the way we live and what this book say proves itself. Your life proves your walk and your talk, and this book proves itself. And everything we are now walking in is in the book. Hallelujah. And I keep sharing this testimony for purpose. I had a well-known minister in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I served with several different organizations within these last almost 44 years of my life in ministry, and I've uh, been in some of the biggest organizations around the country and worked with some of the largest ministers. 
and the Most High was sending me in and out, and I didn't even know why I was going in, in and out of this place. And when I went in, I stayed faithful, completed my assignment, but I was on a journey. And I'm happy that the same almighty God that I met March 4th, 1980, one Tuesday night, right over here, coming out of Calhoun, getting ready to turn left on McGregor. He spoke to me that night, changed my life. He'd been talking to me for nearly 44 years. Now, I'm not saying I know it all. That's not what I'm saying. I know that voice. I know when he speak to me. I know when he show me these scriptures. And so that's the foundation that I'm standing on. So, as I said, I don't necessarily need to prove nothing to nobody. Because the father that's been leading me for these 44 years, he led me to this, what we call this awakening. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I'm completely confident. So the preacher, well-known preacher in one of the organizations that I, I, I was a part of, and they follow me all the time. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> some of them are probably looking right now. I love y'all. <laughs> they follow me incognito. Is that what it is? They're watching me. I don't even know why they watch me so much, but I love y'all. I love all you guys. And But this preacher told me, well-known preacher in Baton Rouge, he said, well, Apostle Lewis, would you? Why are you preaching that Hebrew Israelite stuff? And I'm like, why are you not preaching the Hebrew Israelite stuff? I thought this book was a Hebrew Israelite book. Right, right. Hallelujah. So these religions have messed us up. Hallelujah. And you look at, you on the outside looking in, thinking we off, and you was born in something that was off. You know, so uh, Yeshua, a.k.a. Jesus, was a Hebrew and an Israelite. And the Bible said when we when we receive this spirit, he places us in him. Yeah. Man, isn't it amazing? You out here talking about Hebrew Israelites, talking them down, and you're supposed to be in a Hebrew Israelite, mm -hmm. the Savior. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? The Satan will mess you up. <laughs> I'm just flowing here, but Satan will mess. Satan, he had me messed up. He has all of us. He done messed the religious world up. Hallelujah. Glory to the Most High, but uh, and I understand I understand where the confusion comes from because there's some of us who call ourselves Hebrews and who have found out that we we really are the Hebrews of the Scripture. But some of us who call ourselves Hebrew Israelites do set some bad examples sometimes. Yes. Amen. Yes. But here's what the church world don't understand: that in Romans chapter eleven. Paul said it's a mystery that he's going to send uh, the deliverer from Zion. Where is that? True Zion is in glory. And Messiah is at the right hand of the Father. And, he, and in Romans chapter 11, he said, these my people, and when the deliverer come from Zion, I'm going to take care of my people. That's what the church world don't realize. And he said, this my covenant to them. So the Gentiles don't have this covenant. So some of our ailments are going to be taken care of by the Messiah when he arrives. Now, I'm not saying you need to wait till he arrives to get your ailments right. <laughs> I'm not saying that either. I believe we should be ready when he comes. When that trumpet blow, I believe we should be ready. But it is documented in this book that nobody told us about. I know the Gentiles didn't tell me about it. I don't remember one church I ever been to that told me about these promises that was made to the true Israelites. When he said he's going to turn away ungodliness from Jacob. And then he's going to get the rebels from among us. And some people he's going to restore and heal when he get here. Ain't nobody ever told me this right there in your Bible. But that promise is not for everybody. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited already. You praying for me? No, did you? Pray, pray that I can calm down. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway. The preacher said, uh, well, you're not preaching what you used to preach. I said, find one message that I've ever preached where I didn't preach the scriptures. Mm -hmm. He couldn't find it. Because they, we all was in these organizations together. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't find one time where I ever preached anything other than the scriptures. But what has changed is my perspective of the scriptures. Yes, that's right. What has changed is my perspective of the people y'all told us was the Israelites. That has changed. I admit it. Amen. I'm guilty of that. And I do not apologize. 
because this nation lied to us, brought us over here, stripped us of our heritage, told us we was just from someplace in Africa. Africa, Africa is a continent with some, what, 40 to 50 nations? Uh-huh, 54 nations in it. So you, so you, and I ain't mad at nobody, I'm just talking history, and these are facts. So, so, and these are facts they didn't want us to talk about, but they had no idea the Messiah was going to wake us up. And all these people in him got the same testimony all over the world. I'm hearing from them from everywhere. And I'm not the only one. Negroes everywhere waking up saying the same thing. How is this happening? The Bible prophesied that Israel was going to come back to their fullness. Well, why is it that we all come into a fullness and realizing who we are, but ain't no other people group on the planet this is happening to. They wait for somebody else, this to happen to somebody else. But it's happening to us. That's enough of that. But we in this book. And we supposed to be excited about it. We supposed to be bold about it. I'm not saying lift it up in pride. I'm saying walking in humility. And what they didn't tell us, now I'm going to tell you I know it. Because the Most High revealed it to us. Hallelujah. But uh, anyway, let me finish this story. The preacher had to agree with me because I took him through the scriptures. Proved everything with teaching and preaching. And I challenged all of my fellow pastors, ministers that I was in that circle with, let's reason together. I don't do the debate thing. I don't argue and fuss. But if you want to sit down and let's reason together in the scripture, you'll find that this is the document uh, that we're preaching. This document that we're preaching is matching from Genesis to Revelation. And so if you call it a cult, prove it. Prove it. That's my challenge to the ministers uh, that I still love, still walk with, and some of y'all that watch me and follow me in everything I do. Keep on following. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so now let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, and we'll go down to verse 8. I'm going to do my best not to be long. <clears throat> and it reads as follows. Now the end of the commandment is charity or love, I like to say love, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Now watch this. From which, if you ever deviate from the love of the Most High, if you ever try to teach his word or teach his laws or teach his statutes and judgments and you deviate from love, you are course. And this is what Paul is saying. From which some have swerved and have turned aside to vain jangling. You're just moving your mouth. You can know all the Bible. You can know cover to cover. You can know sources. You can know history, but if you're not motivated by the love of Yah, you just you just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. You're just moving your mouth, and that's what Hebrewism likes as well. Amen? But it's mainly for these religions out here that took this book, everybody done owned this book, and this book was sent to a people. Well, who are those people? They told us it was somebody else, and we find out not they don't fit nothing. And we fit everything in the book. So now we got to sound the trumpet. Sound the alarm. So from which some having swerved have turned aside to vain jangling. Now watch this. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Now who you think it is that desired to be teachers of the law? Israelites, because they was given the law. That's why you hear so much law, 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 statute, judgment, law, statute, judgment. Why? Because the true Israelite waking up and what were they given in, 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 in the wilderness? The laws, the statutes, and the judgments. What other ethnic group waking up talking about God's laws now? It ain't the church because they believe God did away with his laws. And that's the biggest lie they could have ever told us. Hallelujah. So these people, these Negroes waking up everywhere all over the world, Talk, they're on the streets talk, talking about God's law, statutes, and judgments. I understand them, even though I don't agree with everything I'm hearing, and I certainly don't agree with everything I'm seeing, 
and everything that's said, but they are our people. And I understand them. And they're waking up, and this is all they know. Why? Because this stuff was in us as a people. Yes. Hallelujah. But now, <clears throat> it's time to bring some clarity to it all. And I'm not trying to say I'm the smartest man in the world to bring all the clarity, but I'm going to do my part. And I'm going to give my measure. Because the Bible said under each one of us is given grace according to the gift of Christ. So those of us that are truly called by Yeshua, truly sent by Yeshua, should carry a grace that would empower us to teach this book and make it plain. So that's what I want to do today is address some of the laws that's, that's being taught in Israel. And I'm going to address it from the perspective of Yeshua, his apostles, and show you the document. And now once I've made it plain, I tell everybody, when I finish with these scriptures, and when I finish making it clear and plain, your argument is not with me, it's with this Bible. Amen. That's why I don't have to argue and debate with nobody. Mm -hmm. And everybody that see me read this book, you going to see it for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, you know, let me tell you, let me share something with you. Uh, what's the biggest cop out in the world with ministers, with Christianity, uh, even in the Hebrew Israelite awakening? I think this is a cop out when people say, oh, that's your opinion. <laughs> oh, that's your or uh, what they say, uh, interpretation. Yeah. Baloney. The word interprets itself. <laughs> and so, in fact, none of us supposed to be interpreting the Bible. Amen. Because Second Peter, first chapter, say that the scriptures mm. was given by holy men of God. Holy, not unholy. Okay. Holy men of God spake as they was moved by the Holy Ghost or the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit. And, it, and the Bible said, there, there, it, it, no prophecy that they gave, all of this, this is a book of prophecy. No prophecy, no scripture is of any private. Ain't nobody supposed to be interpreting the Bible. Okay. No preacher supposed to be interpreting the Bible. No organization supposed to interpret the Bible. But how, how many of y'all know they've been, they've been doing it forever? Oh, yeah. I used to do it until I found out. He said, you ain't supposed to interpret this document. Why? Because if you teach the document, Line up on line, it interprets itself. And so when somebody says, oh, that's your interpretation, uh-uh, I'm going I'm, I'm to make sure you say these scriptures is interpreting themselves, and, they, and they're supposed to. I'm going to make it so simple, Ray Charles going to see it. Come on, come on. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, I know he's gone, but he's seeing something somewhere. Because the soul don't die. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So to all you ministers, when I finish, your argument is with the Almighty. And if you ain't careful, just like the mayor said, if you're not careful, you're going to find yourself fighting with God. Mm -hmm. you're fighting with this Hebrew Israelite awakening. And, and I know there's been a lot of corrupt stuff among some in this movement, but that's the problem. You weren't supposed to be watching that. You're supposed to be discerning and looking at this book. Because Messiah is going to take care of all that corrupt stuff. And all these corrupt preachers, especially Christianity. <clears throat> so, from which some having served, swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desired to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good. Please hear this, all ministers. Please hear this. We can get another couple of chairs for them. Um, for the time on, if you don't mind. Please hear this, everybody. Please hear this, clergy. Please hear this. Christianity, please hear it, Israel. The Bible said the law is good if a man use it lawfully. So if the Most High God, Yah God Almighty, has made a statement that the law is good, why would Christianity say he done away with something good? It just needs to be rightly divided. Because we in a time where everything don't apply. Let me give an example before somebody fall out, not anybody in here. There was a time when they offered bulls and goats, and they had laws governing how you offer a bull and a goat. They had laws as to how you had to clean the animal before you offered it to God to get your sins covered year by year. But 
that in, in its time, that law was good. All of God's laws are good. But now you can't take that those ordinances and those laws not and apply them in this time. That's what I'm saying. So he didn't throw it away. If he ever went back to that, guess what? You'd have to go back to the same laws. I don't see us going back. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to do is make a point. Some laws don't apply, apply it in this time that may not apply in this time. And so I think when we're telling people about the law, we need to explain that properly. Or folks going to be deceived and be confused. So some of the laws don't apply in this time. And that's not down in any law y'all gave. So the Bible says the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now let me go somewhere else right fast. You know, when I'm up ministering or talking or doing whatever, my wife know this, and people in Baton Rouge know this, I'm going somewhere. I'm traveling. So follow with me, because I'm going somewhere in everything that I'm saying. Now, before I get deeper into the message, first of all, let me get the subject. Subject is, the law is good if you use it lawfully. So Christianity, Christianity said he done done away with his law when? Some of them he suspended because we're not doing that no more. Christ was the last sacrifice. Okay? So we don't need those governing bulls and goats. And there are other things. The temple. There was laws governing the temple. There was laws that was good that Yah gave governed them while they was in their land. Well, they ain't in the land now. Hallelujah. So when we teach the law, we have to rightly divide the law. Otherwise, folks going to get confused. So my subject is the law is good if a man use it lawfully. If y'all don't mind, repeat after me. The law is good. The law is good. If, if a man use it lawfully. A man use it lawfully. What that also saying? You can use this good law unlawfully. That's good. And I love my brothers and I love this Hebrew Israelite awakening. But I got enough discernment to know that some of them desire to be teachers of the law, but they're confusing a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. With the law. Yeah. Hallelujah. But one thing we know, the law is good if you use it lawfully. It's some things you cannot lawfully apply now. Simple as that. Okay? And I won't say to those on social media, don't fall out till you hear the whole matter. And when I finish, then you all go with these scriptures. <clears throat> but this is what the Apostle Paul said. The law is good if, it, if, we, if a man used it lawfully because there was people desiring to teach the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Now, now we all in this Hebrew Israelite awakening. We all done come to the awareness that y'all law is still is still good. And and, and, and these <laughs> most of these laws, statutes, and judgments and these uh feast days, that was our custom before they took it from us. And, the, and 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 it's nothing wrong with learning your custom, doing your custom, going back, ain't nothing wrong with that. Now it's something wrong if you misapply them. If you return back to the custom and some of the things that Yah gave us as a people, now you won't go force it on somebody else. That's unlawful. You can't do that. And that's what the Judaizers got in trouble with the, at the Jerusalem Council. Hallelujah. All right, let me, let, me, let me go here for a minute. We are in a great Hebrew Israelite awakening. And many are teaching the laws of the Most High. But not everyone is rightly dividing the laws of Yah. Because some people get confused. Can anybody testify to that? Mm -hmm. It's confusing some people. It's confusing the church world. Because they say they, they say all the laws gone. Well, that's a lie too. Okay. <clears throat> and as I read, just read 1 Timothy 1 8. We know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. This is in the New Testament. So everybody that downplay on y'all's laws, you lied on him. So just repent. Because he said, we know that the law is good if a man uses it lawfully. So in this lesson, I want to focus on lawfully applying the law. That's what I want to focus on. And I'm not going to give you my opinion. I'm going to give you what's written. 
in this document. Okay? All right. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. I've been quoting this scripture quite a bit, but I want to focus on it now. Peter was an apostle, a follower of Yeshua, and uh, Jesus taught him, trained him. He knew the laws. He knew the judgments. He knew all those laws. But Yeshua trained them up. He trained Peter. He trained all of these apostles. He even trained Paul. Let me share something with you. Any Israelite in this 21st century that, that said they are Israelites and come telling you Paul is wrong, you ought to know who's wrong. The person who said Paul was wrong. Because Peter said, Paul said some things hard to be understood, which those that wrestle, uh, that are unlearned, they wrestle to their own destruction. So anybody, anybody in Christianity and anybody in the Israelite community that got the audacity to say Paul was wrong or James was wrong, they're the ones wrong. But this book is true. Okay? <clears throat> So here's what Peter said. Peter was the apostle to the Israelites, who some people call Jews. And really, that, that word has become tricky. It has become a total deception. Here is why. Because uh, there was a tribe of Judah, or Yahudi. Okay? Those people was in what is called the southern kingdom. Because when, when Solomon had all these wives... And he began to follow these idols. The Most High Yah, he offended Yah. And Yah said, I'm going to split the kingdom. So he split. It was 12 tribes. He split the kingdom because of Solomon's folly. And then you had a southern kingdom, which was 10 tribes. And you had, I'm sorry, you had a northern kingdom, which was 10 tribes. Then you had a southern kingdom, which was two tribes. And, and so it was, it was uh, Judah and Benjamin. And some of the Levites, because the Levites dwell among them all. So the southern kingdom of the two tribes, uh, Judah and Benjamin, took on the name Jews, or uh, Yahudi. Okay? And so when you said the Jews or the Jewish people, the deception now is you're talking about, uh, you know, Jews, the Jews. You think that cover all 12 tribes and it don't. Now, I don't think you guys think that, but I'm saying it's a big deception out here. In the whole world, when you say Jews, they think about a people other than us. Right. <laughs> and so it's like the Bible said the devil deceived the whole world. So when you say Jews, everybody thinking about the Israelites, the 12 tribes, the chosen people, and their mind go to a people who have established themselves to be the Jews. And it's just like the devil, okay, because he said, he said, I'm, I'm gonna, he said, I'm going to bless them that bless you. I'm going to curse them that curse you. And he said, I'm, I'm going to come and get all this stuff among, among my people. I'm going to come back and fix it. And he said, everybody that curse you, I'm going to curse, curse them. And everybody that bless you, I'm going to bless them. But what the devil did is, okay, well, let's, let's, let's co confuse the world and make them think that them is over here. And so forget about these people. Oh, they just nobodies. They just they, they they were just slaves brought here. Okay, just forget about them. They they just people who, who kill each other. But but these are the Jews. So Satan has deceived the whole world. Yeah. And now everybody sent all of their sources to a people who say they the Jews who covered all 12 tribes and the real people over here. And so it was a big deception. So Jews don't cover all 12 tribes. That's what I'm saying. Israelites cover them. Because a, a real bloodline Jew is an Israelite. And that's why I'm glad we're going back to saying Hebrews. Because the Bible says Hebrew. They all are Hebrews. But they're all not Israelites. Hebrew Israelite. And so we in a Hebrew Israelite awakening. Because we're bringing everybody back to what the Bible originally said. So what we have done is we have, we have allowed the people who call themselves Jews to define the book to and when you read it you see it through their eyes and their perspective you see it through a European perspective I ain't hating on nobody I'm just telling the truth on everybody on. and they have perverted this document and so now we're preaching it from a Hebraic point of view and most folks think we off the rocker no you was born off the rocker right. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. If you research Christianity, that's one of the most bloodiest religions on the planet. Yes. I'm not talking about people who follow in Christ in Christianity. Yes. There, are, there are people in Christianity, some of them people love Yah. They love Jesus. They love, they love him. They still refer to him as Jesus. Everybody not talking about C.J. Borgia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now we're addressing him as Yeshua because that's that was his name. Right. Wasn't no Jesus back there. No. Uh, let's just be real. But now if you're gonna fish, you gotta fish where the fish are biting. Yeah. So, huh? And use the right bait. So some of some of them people in the Christianity circle, they still love this Yeshua we're talking about. They ain't talking about C.J. Borgay. I wasn't talking about C.J. Borgay. I was talking about the real Jesus. Yes, sir. And now I know his real name, Yeshua. Yes. That's right. But my point is, when I say Christianity, I'm not downing people in that circle that's truly following you, God. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. But, I'm, but I'm calling out the religion. I'm calling out the structure. The system. Because the system was set up by our oppressors that brought us here and taught us our own documents. So they got to be called out. In love. Hallelujah. So Peter is an Israelite. He's a Hebrew and he's an Israelite. And Peter in this letter is not talking to the Christian churches. But we done read this Bible and we said, oh, he's talking to Christians. No. He was talking to these Hebrews who were Israelites. Because in the first chapter of Peter, he said, to the strangers scattered. Mm -hmm. yes. and who was scattered? They were scattered through slavery, slave ships, and many of them were dispersed throughout Africa. Yes. Peter was writing to Hebrew yes. Israelites. Yes. But for years, people done read this Bible and thought he was talking about Christians. So let's get the record straight. I'm not saying people that call themselves Christians that's really serving the most high is not included. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying let's get the record straight. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So Peter here is talking, he's a Hebrew Israelite talking to Hebrew Israelites. And I challenge anybody to disprove that. So here's what he said to the Hebrews. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. Now watch this. He's talking to the Israelites. They're scattered at this time. They don't have a temple. They can't fulfill certain laws in the temple. They can't fulfill certain laws in the land. But they can still work the law of liberty. And they can still please Yah with this, this law in this New Testament under the order of Melchizedek. So here Peter said, now y'all scattered some things that was written, which is true, which is the law, but some things you can't fulfill, but here's what you need to do. Be established in the present truth. Uh -huh. yes. The present truth. So when you say keep the laws, the statutes, and the judgments, let's be honest. What's laws, statutes, and judgments? The present truth that Yeshua brought us in. Yes. That the apostles established. Yes. And stop trying to put everybody in bondage because you see a law in the scripture. Okay. And don't right, rightly, rightly know how to properly apply it because the law is good yeah. if you use it lawfully. Come on now. Something you can't lawfully apply. Yeah, that's good it's good? Yeah. It's clear. Did I write that? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be clear. Because somebody will say that's your opinion. They know about this Peter's opinion. Well, it ain't really Peter's opinion. Holding me in spade as they was moved by the Holy Spirit. That's right. So your argument is with the Spirit of the Most High Yah. All right? So Peter said, Israelites, be established in the present truth. So that's what we're going to talk about a little bit. All right, but let me say this about the law now before somebody confuse what I'm saying. You see, people people will hear what you said, but they hear what they want to hear you say. <laughs> so let me slow down and speak in slow motion, not for you guys, but for somebody maybe out there that want to twist my words. Let me show you how I feel about 
all of God's laws, all of y'all laws. Even the one, even the schoolmaster, the Bible said the schoolmaster was to bring us to Christ. But even the schoolmaster was good. And the dietary good. But you can't go impose that for salvation now. That's where you mess up at. Let me throw this in for free. <laughs> Won't cost you nothing. Um, here's some facts. And this, to, this is to show that any law y'all ever give is good. But, well, let me, I'll get there later. Because I don't want nobody misunderstand nothing I'm saying. All right. Now, the, the, uh, what is the Sabbath day Adventists? Now, I don't believe in their religion. I don't, I don't believe in Alan White because she made so many prophecies that was false. It's crazy. And they were not Hebrew Israelites that started these uh, religions. In fact, at the Nicene Council, uh, most of the, the Catholic Church, and when Martin Luther broke away from the Catholic Church, you got the Protestant churches, and all of the schools that we went to, even in black seminaries or black schools, all everybody that was raised in this Western Eurocentric world, guess who taught us? The Europeans. Yes, they did. They conquered everything and they put their spin on everything we learned. I'm sorry, you're going to have to, well, you ain't got to admit it, it's still true. Come on. But at the Nicene Council, most of the churches still preached the creeds that was determined at the Nicene Council. Even they said, well, I'm not a Catholic, but you still got the, the residue of some of the stuff they established. And so what they did is they put the Hebrews out of the meeting. Wouldn't let them come in the meeting. And they took over, colonized everybody, colonized that land over there. It was Great Britain and the Balfour Declaration that put those people over there and gave them that land and said, this is Israel. Oh, it's the truth. But, but they put the Hebrews out and they decided what books would be in the Bible. They decided the perspective of the Bible. And so most of us black ministers that's just the truth. I came, I was in there. Most of us black ministers are preaching a watered down European gospel. Right. I don't hate nobody. Yeah. There ain't no hate gospel. What is hate is what you did to me and you ain't never took responsibility for it. That's hate. But I ain't mad at you nobody. I ain't on the street cussing nobody out. I ain't going to cuss nobody out. I don't believe in that. I believe it's wrong. But I ain't scared to tell the truth. So, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Spirit. Some people get offended at Holy Ghost. I don't get offended at neither one of them. Amen. I ain't, putting, I ain't getting in nobody's box. Hallelujah. But, amen. I, I went there and almost lost my thought. <laughs> but let me get back to the lesson. Yah's laws are good. All of them. The ones that applied back there, the ones that apply in this present truth, all of them good. Anybody say y'all's law? Oh, here's what I was about to say. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, <clears throat> the Sabbath day Adventists, even though I don't believe in their doctrine, they embrace the Ten Commandments and they embrace the dietary laws. You may not know it, but they are the, some of the, they did a, some st statistics on them. They are some of the most healthiest people in the country. Yeah. Why? Because they took Yah at his word and began to eat the way he said eat. So don't tell me those laws are bad. Right. And that's not what I'm saying. Right. Right. And they keep the Sabbath. And they keep the Sabbath. Yeah. So they got some things right. right. You know? But they weren't the ones that were given the book. No. Hmm. They're not the people of the book. Right. We're the people of the book. Yep. And we spoke been teaching the royal priests of the earth. Mm -hmm. But when we was colonized and, 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 and put in these nations, they taught us our document. So our perspective don't have to be checked. Because a lot of the things we once believed is not the truth. But my point is this, that they do embrace the dietary laws, and, and it's proven out of all the religions, they are some of the most healthiest people in the country. Now that's a, those are facts. So don't tell me those laws are bad. Now if you want to go and eat what you want to eat, that's your business. I ain't up here saying you're going to hell because you eat a piece of catfish. I, I, I ain't going to say that. But that ain't true. 
That ain't true. And that's not the present truth we in. But I will say, if you follow his lead in those areas, you will be healthy. Because what the law is good if you use it law. Okay? I hope I made my point there. Because I'm not trying to down any of y'all's laws. But I'm trying to put everything in perspective. That's all I'm trying to do with the word. Okay? Let me show you how I feel about y'all's laws in any uh, law that y'all give and will ever give. Here's how I feel. And this is what the scriptures say. Proverbs 6.23 For the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Religion say he did away with his laws. This book says the law is our way of life. And it's a lamp to our feet. Let's go somewhere else. But we still need to put them in proper perspective and in the proper time, okay? We'll get there. <clears throat> Psalms 119 verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. The Bible said you're blessed if you walk in the law of the Lord. But Christianity told us they done away with all I'm gone. They misunderstood a lot of stuff Paul said. And that's how they come up with that conclusion. That's what happened when you put the Hebrews out and you colonize and decide to teach somebody else's history. That's true. That's right. You colonize, you take people's land, you take their heritage, and then you take and try to teach their heritage yeah. with your agenda, and that's why we all messed up. I ain't mad at you. Now, there's some Hebrews out there really mad at you, though. <laughs> that's why they're on the street cussing some of y'all out. But I ain't mad at you. I'm just telling the truth. I understand why they do what they do. And let me tell you this. Okay, you out there talking about, you black pastors, y'all out there talking about these black Hebrew Israelites. Okay, well, where was you when they took these same people and beat them and raped them and killed them and, and enslaved them? Somebody ain't never paid them reparations. Well, where was you then? Yeah. Why you don't talk about that? You said that's a long time ago. The Bible said one day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years in one day. God has not forgotten you better read James chapter 5, verse 1 down to verse 6. The Father said, there's a judgment coming on the nation. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. This book has been taught wrong. But here's how I feel about the law. Here's what the words say about the law. You see that's in the Old Testament. I'm going to the New Testament. Come on. <laughs> Are the scriptures of new in the new? Hallelujah. See, people judge so fast. Hear the whole matter. I ain't talking to nobody in here. I, just, I know what I'm dealing with out here. And none of them take me up on my challenge, Brother Tom. None of them. I invite them. Come on, let's sit down and talk. We, we ain't debating. We ain't going to not fall out with each other. Let's, let's show, let me show you why I'm preaching this Hebrew Israelite stuff. Because it's a Hebrew Israelite book. Amen. And Hebrew Israelite people. And all of us ain't got it together. But the Bible said you ain't supposed to be boasting against these people. That's right. Because it says in Romans, I'm going to cut you off when I come to get my people out of these nations and get them right. He said, I'm going to cut off every nation that have done them wrong. That's in the book too. <laughs> okay. Psalm 118 verse 1. Blessed are they that are undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. You're blessed if you walk in the law of the Lord. Even though, even though some of these laws he put in place over here, if you just apply them to your life, you still will be blessed. Now, you're not applying them trying to make it to glory because you can't make it to glory and into the kingdom without Yeshua. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is every law he put in place is still good and it's a benefit to you. How dare the enemy in the nations of the world and the religion of the world tell us that his law ain't no good? That's right. <clears throat> okay. Proverbs 7 2. Keep my commandments and live. Yes. Yes. Keep my commandments and live. But there ain't no commandment. Who told you that? Satan. <laughs> Keep my commandments and live. And my law as the apple of the dying eye. Yeah. All right. You can't cut that out the Bible. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the New Testament. People that miss people that took Romans chapter 7, I promise you. You need to reconsider everything you was taught about Romans 7, about Paul struggling in sin and couldn't keep the law. They lie. All of that's twisted. And you need to, I've got teachings online to prove itself. 
you need to let all that teaching go because none of that was true. Here's what Paul really thought. Romans 7, 12. Wherefore the law is holy. It's what? Holy. holy. Well, how dare somebody says I'm holy? Okay. And the commandments, holy. What? In the New Testament. In what they call the New Testament. And it's not only holy, it's just and it's good. Now, if that's what Paul said in Romans chapter 7, why would he turn around and down something holy, just, and good? Don't make no sense, do it. You don't go around and teach somebody that the law, oh, the law ain't good now. Nah, it ain't no good. The Bible said the law is holy, just, and good. Case closed. Romans 7, 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. Now, the Bible said the law is holy. The law is just. The law is good, and the law is spiritual. I don't have time to even deal with, but I am carnal, so don't understand. Because some people think Paul turned around and said, well, I'm a sinner. I'm born in sin. That ain't what that scripture say. That scripture say, I'm carnal, soul under sin, not in sin. Paul wasn't saying he was sinning. That's a whole other lesson. But let me hurry and make some drama. Psalm 119, 142. The righteous is an everlasting right. Uh, no, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the law is the truth. Oh, you say, I know the truth, but I don't believe in the law. What? But you believe in the laws of America. But you don't believe in Yah's law. Case closed. Now, I'm going to go back to Peter. 2 Peter 1, verse 12. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. All of this stuff about the law I just said is completely true. It was true back then. It's true now. But now here Peter, who is the apostle to the Israelites, all 12 tribes, said, but you Israelites, y'all now, since you're out the land, you don't have a temple, right now be established in the present truth. So that's what we got to understand as Hebrew Israelites because there's so much teaching on the laws, the statutes, and judgments. If you don't rightly divide, everybody's going to be confused. Okay? Now, <clears throat> number two under my introduction. Now I want to go back to my text and establish some truths from the scripture to show that not everyone is properly applying the laws of Yah according to his will and timing. Because Peter said, be established in the present truth, Israelites. Well, why are you preaching the truth that was applied here? The law is good if you use it lawfully. I'm going to tell you, the, let me, let me, I ain't talking about nobody. I love my people. I love this Hebrew Israelite awakening. I'm praying for all of my brothers. I'm with them. I stand with true Israel. But I can't sit here and lie for nobody. Let me tell you the real problem. Some of our brothers was never called, prepared, and sent by Yah. Mm. Every YouTube channel is don't have Yah's um, sanction on it. He has not sanctioned some of them that's teaching the law. I got people writing me from everywhere. I can't even keep up with the letters, the comments, when this YouTube thing blew up. Blew up. I can't keep up with it. People just rejoicing. This is so simple. Oh, it answers quick. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's a grace that rests on someone calling sin. Not just me, anyone. And when they teach, it's supposed to simplify. This, this is a simple life. Walking with Christ is simple. Religion made it complicated. So this is simple. But if you listening to someone that's confusing you, <laughs> I mean, it don't take a rocket scientist to say, wait a minute, this man, this, this ain't right. Mm -hmm. It don't take a rocket scientist to figure out y'all didn't send that man because y'all is not the author of confusion. No, right. He ain't send that man or that woman. Anybody he sent, I ain't referring to me either, although I believe I'm sin. But Anyone that's truly sent by Yah with a grace on their life to handle this holy document is not going to bring confusion to you. 
So if you're getting confused, <clears throat> it's either the, the person has been confused and trying to teach what they was taught, or the person ain't never been seen. Simple as that. So now if you want to keep being confused, keep listening to it. But don't lie on the truth. Okay? So, now I want to go back to my text and establish some truths from the scriptures to show that not everyone is properly applying Yah's laws, even though all of them are good, but not everybody is properly applying Yah's laws uh, according to his will and according to timing. Because Peter said be uh, establishing the present truth. He was talking to Israelites. Okay. Uh, let's go back and look at my text real closely. And I'm, I'm making some ground here. And I'm going to just about be done. Okay. Now the end of the commandment is charity. Somebody trying to get, uh, I think it's uh, Romans chapter 13. We're going to start at verse 8, I think it is. And let me hear the first couple of uh, words in there. To make sure I got the right scripture. It's not in my notes, but go ahead. Romans 13 and 8. Yeah, I think it's starting at verse 8. Oh, no man anything. Okay, go ahead. Oh, no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled. Okay, the law, the present truth for the Israelites now is the law of love. Okay? Now Christianity said, okay, it's the law of love. Love love God and love others as you love yourself. But we ain't got no law. That's stupid. You no 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 law. How you, if you ain't got no law of y'all, how you governing love? You're talking about lust. But true God kind of love is governed by his law. So that, that don't make sense. So, let me, hold on to that right there. But let me read this. Watch this. Now the end of the commandment is charity or love out of a pure heart. Every single commandment in the Bible is motivated by love. Yes. If, if, if somebody teaching the law, the statutes, and the judgments without the spirit of love, they out of the will of God. Because every law, every statute is motivated by love. So anytime you deviate from that motivation, it didn't come from Yah, even though it's true. Because all you can do is seek uh help me, Father. All you can do is make people religious and put people in bondage and make them become Judaizers. Okay. If it's not motivated by love. Even though the law is good, but if the spirit of the law you're teaching ain't right, your spirit is on the people. Mm -hmm. Not you all spirit. Okay. So, now the end of the commandment, any commandment y'all give, any commandment the apostles gave, the end result and the motivation and the, the whatever law or statute it was, it was about love. I'm, I'm not talking about human love. Y'all's love. He is love. So the end of the commandment is love or charity out of a pure heart. That's why you can't preach the good news man. You got to preach the good news glad. Right. Right. Come on. <laughs> and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. See, there ain't no faith without commandments. I'm sorry. From, watch this, from which some having swerved, when you deviate from this principle, some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. You just, that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, you're a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Yeah. If you're not moved by this spirit of Yah, which is love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about Yah's love. I ain't talking about this stuff in the world. Mm -hmm. So, watch this. Desiring to be teachers of the law. We're in a great Hebrew Israelite awakening. I understand why all the Hebrews and black people talking about law, 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 law. Because he gave us the laws. We, our ancestors stood at Mount Sinai and received okay. the laws. So it's in us. And so now we're waking up. And some of them waking up and have not received the spirit yet. Because the Bible told the Hebrew, Paul met certain Hebrews. He said, have y'all received the spirit since you believe? Okay. Since you come into the awakening? Uh -huh. Since you believe you're a Hebrew? Have you received the spirit? 
And so some waking up, and it's in us because we're the, we're the, uh, the descendants of the ancestors, and the ancestor was given those laws and statutes and judgment, so that's why you're hearing a lot of law, 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 law in this Hebrew Israelite awakening. But some of them waking up designed to teach the law, but not understanding what they say, nor where are they affirm. Mm. And it's confusing people. Yeah. And that's why the church is talking about some of us. Mm. But y'all better be quiet, because y'all should keep your mouth shut. Right. But these my people. Yeah. And if you don't, I'm going to cut you off. You say, I don't believe y'all are people, just wait. <laughs> You'll believe later. Yeah. But we know that the law is good if a man uses it law. Yeah. Next thing. Now let's deal with the present truth. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Whereby, wherefore, I would not be negligent to put you always remember of these things, though you know them and be established in the present truth. This is a Hebrew talking and t telling the Hebrew Israelites how to do it. Now let's look at James 1 verse 25. Now, the book of James, and y'all think about the thousands and thousands of of people who have read this book and especially the book of James and they read it and they're just taking pliers no, 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 don't get me wrong it's nothing wrong with other people applying these things to their life but know what it's about is what I'm saying don't leave the people out who the book was sent to and just play it I'm the we the people no you're not don't, don't try to take nobody else's heritage you grafted in among them they're not grafted in among you they don't reverse this thing and all we're trying to say, let's untangle this thing and get it right. I mean, you all, even if you even if you're not a Hebrew Israelite, you ought to want the truth. You ought to want to know the truth if you've been lied to. So don't get mad at me because I'm untangling the stuff. <laughs> but in he in James, James is a Hebrew and he's an Israelite. And who is he writing to? Somebody here. No, you're writing to the 12 churches. No. <laughs> the, the 12 tribes scattered. How was the southern kingdom scattered? Through slavery. A worldwide slavery that Yeshua prophesied before he went to the cross. He went to the cross and, and, and he died or he went on that tree and died. But that didn't stop a worldwide slavery that he prophesied. Ain't nobody on the planet went through a worldwide slavery and the descendants still in the lands of that captivity but us. Yeah. Somebody said, well, other people went in slavery. Where well, y'all people group that went in slavery and still there? Mm -hmm. And still never got paid. And still in the same nations of their captivity. Where? Stop lying, this Bible true. It was not Christians who went on slave ship. It was Negroes. Yeah. Come on, let's be real. All right, we can't lie and play. I didn't come to play. And I love everybody. Don't play. Don't play. Don't shut the book if you ain't going to do it right. But James is talking to a people that were scattered throughout the earth. Most of the southern tribes scattered through a worldwide slavery. And he's writing to them. James 1 verse 1. To the 12 tribes scattered. You come down here, he's talking to the same people in James 1.25. Here's what he said to them. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, the royal law, the law of liberty, the Ten Commandments, the love of God, when he said love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, mind, and strength, and neighbor as you love yourself, that's the royal law. Those are the laws that he said, establish yourself in this present truth. Yeah. Because when we die, this is the law he's going to judge us all by. Paul said, Paul, hold on to that verse, but, but there's a verse in Romans chapter 2. I know I'm all over the place, but I'm about to close here. That's all right. Romans chapter 2, there's a verse where it says, well, not the hearers of the law shall be just before God, but the doers of the law. If one of y'all find it, let me know, please. Because I want to insert that. <clears throat> because Gentiles taught us that God threw his laws away. He ain't threw no royal law away. He ain't threw those Ten Commandments away. He didn't throw the law of liberty away. Because when we die, Jew and Gentile, Israelite, non-Israelite, when we stand for the throne, you know, when you stand for that throne, he's going to measure you by this royal law. Mm -hmm. 
You say, I believe. If you believe, you'd be doing what he said. Don't say, nobody believe Yah if they're not doing what Yah say. That's proof you don't believe it. You say, yes, I do, but you ain't doing nothing. Faith without works is dead. Right. That's what the book says. Yeshua said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and don't do the things I say? Why do you say you believe in me and don't do nothing I say? You found it? Read it. Romans 2.13. Yeah, sounds right. For not the hearers of the law. It ain't, it ain't just you hearing the law. Come on. Are just before God. Just before God. What they What is that? At the judgment. You're not going to be just if you're claiming, I believe, but you ain't done nothing he said in this the law he told us to be established in. Come on. Doers of the law are going to be justified. See, they cut they cut stuff out. They twisted stuff. They told us stuff. And now the stuff ain't adding up with what we know now. They had no business conquering us, conquering our land. Well, we got ourselves in the mess because our ancestors broke the house commandment. We know why we're here. So that's why I ain't got no issues with nobody. I'm getting my issues straight. I done got my issues straight. Okay? But y'all say y'all still shouldn't have did it. And he still gonna get every one of them if they ain't no true repentance. That's why it's got to be taught right. Give them a chance to repent if they can. So he said, read it one more time. For the hearers of the law are just before God. It's not the um, for hearers not, of Yeah. For not the hearers of the law but the doers of the law. What law? The one Peter said be present, be established in the present truth. To the Israelites. And here James, the Lord's brother, said the same thing. Yeshua taught, Paul taught, the apostles taught, all of them taught it in this present truth. So if we're going to teach the law, let's establish ourselves in the law he told us to focus on and everything else will fall in place. But if you got the cart before the horse, you're going to confuse yourself, confuse others, and going to end up getting rebuked just like our ancestors. So back here, James said to the 12 tribes, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, same thing, this is the law we're to be established in, and it's a set of laws, and continue therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, same thing Paul just said, you got to do it. So all of them match it. And a doer of the work, watch this, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. Which say the other man ain't going to be blessed. Them people hollering, I believe, I believe, I believe. No, you ain't going to be blessed. Because the Bible said the one that's going to be blessed is the one doing it. Okay? This is what he's telling the 12 tribes. And he said, now watch this, James 2 verse 8. Israelites, if you fulfill the royal law, this is the law he said to be established in the present truth. If, if Israelites, if you fulfill the royal law, let's see what James said. And I double D dog dare anybody tell me James lying. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, any, all you big time teachers and preachers, tell me James lying. <laughs> tell him. It says, if you fulfill the royal law, according to the scripture. This law that he's telling us to be established in is in the scriptures. It's in the Torah. It's in the Tanakh. It's in Moses talked about. Some people say I'm Torah only. Okay. But Torah only can be fulfilled with this royal law. That's what he said. So he said, if you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you'll do well. So some people in the Christian church are always just love. Show, show, go back to Romans uh, 13, verse 8. Let me show you what love is. Romans 13, 8. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Owe no man anything but to love one another. I owe you love, you owe me love. Mm -hmm. Come on. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled his love. Here Paul is saying if you love, you fulfill the law. Now keep reading. He's going to tell you what law. He ain't going to leave us blank. 
Oh, okay, then what's wrong? Let me go, let me go get 613 or 614. Or, I, don't, I don't believe them Jewish people. I don't know how many it is. I ain't never studied them all. But I know the ones he told us to be established in. <laughs> so if he tell us to be established in this right here, why are you leaving this and going and getting thousands of them over here? That's how Israel messed up. They missed this law. And when Yeshua came and brought us out of the order of Melchizedek, he brought us back to focus right here. Now, come on, tell me what love is. Keep reading. For this. For this. It, what? Love. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, if you love, you ain't going to be committing adultery. Thou shalt not kill. If you love somebody, you ain't killing them. Just for me. So what he said is, okay, back up again. Let's, let's get, make this plain. Y'all go on with the word, not me. For this. For this, thou shalt not. No, no, no. Back on, back up to eight. Oh, oh, no man anything. Don't owe nobody anything. But to love. But love. For he that loveth another. He that loveth another. Has fulfilled the law. You'll fulfill the law with love. Keep reading, reading, so I can understand what love is now. For this. For love. For this. Thou shalt not commit. You won't be committing adultery. <laughs> Come on. Thou shalt not kill. You won't be killing. Thou shalt not steal. You won't be stealing. What is this? <laughs> the law. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the ten. That's the royal law. Now watch this. Watch this, saints. Watch this, Israelites. When Yeshua brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he brought them to the mountain, and, and Yah told Moses, go down and tell the people, sanctify themselves, wash their clothes, and prepare themselves. I'm coming down in three days, and all y'all, the whole nation, you going to hear my voice. Nine times out of ten when it said obey his voice. Y'all know what he's talking about? The Lord. The Lord. Because all Israel heard his voice. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, we hear the inward voice or the voice of the scriptures when they speak to us. But specifically, he's talking about the voice that the nation heard. He said, I'm coming out in three days. I'm going to let everybody hear my voice. I'm a, then I'm, I'm going to turn around and write them. Amen, amen. So y'all can see them. And so what Israel did is they heard this big thunderous voice when he spoke these ten commandments, which is love, because if you love, you ain't going to be doing these things. And then, and then what happened is they saw his hand right, and before they could go any further, they done built Moses kind of lingered. After, after all the noise settled down, they were scared. And then Moses lingered for several days. Yeah. They built a calf and said, a calf brought us out of Egypt. Right. <laughs> what they did, broke the first one. Right. Have no other God. gods before me. So y'all got mad. Huh? <laughs> so y'all got mad and said, Moses, get back. And I'll kill them all and I'll make a nation with you. Moses, no, don't do that. <laughs> Come, go read the Bible. It's in there. Moses said, no, don't do that. They're going to laugh at us. They're going to say, you brought us out here to kill us. So y'all repented. He said, okay, okay. He said, I'm going to go with you. I was going to be right among you, but put me a temple out here because I'd be done kill them all. Well, y'all better read this Bible. Y'all oh, yeah, ain't no joke. <laughs> he said, leave me out here outside the camp because I have to be around some of these stiff neck Negroes. I'm going to kill them. <laughs> That's in the book. That's in the book. So, so what they did, what they did, what Israel did, is they missed this law yeah. and every other law that was given. Israel went to try to establish themselves in that. Do the French. It ain't nothing wrong with French. I'm just saying, do the French. Don't eat the catfish. Don't do this. Don't do that. And they missed this. Uh, the, one, yeah. the one they needed, they missed. And so y'all said, okay, I'm going to send a savior. I'm going to send a prophet. And he goes, and they told y'all when he was speaking, Mo Moses, tell him stop speaking. Because it was thunderous. Right. He said, tell him stop speaking. Here's what all 12 tribes say. Mm -hmm. Moses, we don't want to hear it no more. Y'all talk to him. And, and you talk to him. And then you come tell us what he's saying. Yeah. That's how you got the law of Moses. <laughs> That's the law of Moses. Yeah. The law of Moses is every other law other than what y'all said. <laughs> now, I'm not saying the law of Moses is bad. But that's how you got the law of Moses. Because God, God would give them to Moses. Moses got bringing to the people. And what they was doing is they was establishing themselves in the works of the law. Mm. But miss the righteousness of the law. Mm. They miss the, the righteousness of faith. Yes. Somebody find, I'm going to show you that these, 
this law he told us to be established in, this love law is the righteousness of faith. This, these are the one Abraham walked in. Abraham heard his voice. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 1 down to verse 3. Who want to read it for me? Can you, can you read one of y'all? Yes. Okay, what's the mic? Get the mic over here because I want it on camp. I want it on camp. I want it here. Y'all go all over y'all when I finish. Turn it on and give it to him. Hallelujah. If you're going to teach the law, teach it right. Let's follow his instruction. That's, we are stiff-necked people, and that's what got us in trouble. Let's humble ourselves. Nothing wrong with the law, but teach it correctly. Read that. What advantage then have the Jew? The Jew or the Israelites, not Jewish people. Right. Us. Yeah. Come on. And what profit is there of circumcision? In circumcision. Come on. Yeah. Uh, much every way. Chief. Much every way. So he's not down in them. Yeah. I'm not either. Come on. Cheaply. Cheaply, uh, mainly. Because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of Moses. The, of the, ten, the love law, Yaspo. That was his breath. That was his bowels. That was his love. He said, Look, I will be your God. You will be a holy people. You will be a nation of priests. But what happened is they broke this law and became one tribe that was the priest. It was for the whole nation. Everybody. But when they did what they did, he narrowed it down to the Levitical priesthood and then to work the altar and to, and, to, and to deal with the law, you had to come from the tribe of Levi. But Yah said, if y'all hear my voice, obey it, all of y'all supposed to be priests. So when Yeshua came, he had to shift the priesthood, bring us under another priesthood and not call all of us priests. Come on, come on. Come on. <laughs> That's a whole nother lesson. <laughs> well, my Holy Spirit, come on, read it. Third verse. Mm-hmm. See, now he said the oracles of God. That was that love law that he, Peter is telling us be established in this law. Because this is the one y'all miss. Go ahead, watch this verse. Okay. But what if some did not believe? Now, what if some did not believe? Because we know that they heard him, but they chose not to believe him because they built the calf, right? right? And this was Israel. This wasn't no church, no Christian church. This was Israelites. Come on. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Okay. Shall their unbelief make what? The faith of God without effect. So what was those oracles? The faith of God. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible said we're supposed to be established in the righteousness of faith, that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be in faith. Not faith as in believing. That's not what he's talking about. There's two types of faith. The faith of God. How, how, was, how was this royal law, this, 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 this law, why was it called the faith of God? Faith coming, Romans 10, 17, by hearing and hearing, did Israel hear it? All of them heard it. That was the word of faith. Now the charismatic church told us the word of faith is believe it for a Cadillac, believe it for a house. Oh, yeah. Now ain't nothing wrong with believing human faith, but that's what, what the Bible was talking about. The word of faith is the faith they heard that came out of his mouth and he called it the faith of God. The faith of God. That's what this royal law is that he said be established in this. Why is he telling the Israelite to be established here? This is what they missed. And they went about to establish their own righteousness and then submit themselves to the righteousness of God. So that's why he took us back right here. So if you don't get this right, you can preach law all you want. You're doing the same thing our ancestors did. Let me try to close. Let me give you a confirming verse. This is not my gospel. This is not my opinion. This is not my interpretation. Is this my interpretation or is this the Bible? Watch this. Rome, uh, Hebrews 7, 11. If therefore perfection was by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. Uh, all the laws came under the Levitical priesthood under the order of Aaron. Am I right about it? Every law he gave came under that order. But now watch what he said. If therefore perfection was by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the law of Aaron? Now let me explain this and tell me if this is what the scripture said or if this is my interpretation. The scripture is saying 
if the Levitical priesthood could have brought us to perfection, there wouldn't have been no need to send Yeshua to bring us under another priesthood. That ain't my interpretation. That's just explaining what the verse is saying because I got good reading, well, kind of good reading and comprehension. Comprehension. <laughs> so stop saying that's your interpretation. No, that's a cop out. That's what the verse says. If perfection, see, now what? There's another verse, I think it's in a little bit further down. It says, it says that uh that this priesthood and this old way could not bring us to perfection, but this better way did. So anybody don't believe in perfection, it's because you don't understand perfection from your point of view. You're looking at it from a human standpoint. So he said. If therefore perfection was by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need were, were there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed, there was a necessity to change the law. I ain't trying to scream, y'all. I'm just getting excited. Excuse me if I'm hurting you here. But this is in my bones. All he said is the priesthood been changed. There been a change of the law. So if you're trying to teach the law and don't understand the change of the priesthood and the change of the law, all you're going to do is confuse people. That's all he said. He told us to be established in this law. <coughs> Ain't nothing wrong with keeping the culture because it was our culture. Those laws and statutes and judgment was our culture that we lived as a people before they took our culture. So ain't nothing wrong with going back to your culture. Something wrong if you think your culture is saving you. That's what we get mixed up in. So I'm not sitting here preaching against the culture. I'm not sitting here preaching against the law. I'm just saying, you got to put this stuff in perspective. That's all I'm saying. Hebrews 5 verse 10. Call the God a high priest. This is another Hebrew talking to Hebrew Israelites. And we thought this was talking to Christians. <laughs> they made that up, y'all. Now, if Christians want to benefit, fine. They ain't got no problem. We ain't trying to down you. I'm just saying y'all down us and stepped on us and made us think this was somebody else. And it was us all the while. So why not preach it from the right perspective? So call the God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He, here this, here this Hebrew Israelite talking to Hebrew Israelites, trying to further explain the change of the priesthood and the change of the law. And watch what he tell them. He said, of whom we have many things to say. He said, I got so much to say to you Hebrews about this because y'all think y'all know the law. Y'all desire to be teachers of the law. You don't understand what you say now where you're firm and you're messing people up. Wow. He said, of whom I have many things to say. Hard to be out of. Why it's so hard for, me, for this Hebrew Israelite to get it through that thick skull? You dull of here. Mm. Hebrews. That's right. <laughs> we some of the most fifth neck people in the world. Y'all know we are. Yeah. That's why we kill each other more than anybody on the planet. James was writing to the 12 tribes. He said, why is there so much war around y'all? Uh, uh, in y'all? And why is there so much enemy? Why y'all uh, uh, always fighting each other? Who it is on the planet that kill each other more than anybody? <laughs> Us. How in the world these people over here saying they the real people and never kill each other? <laughs> they don't divorce. We divorce. Shouldn't, but we do it. They don't fight each other. They ain't got war. They the richest people on the planet. And they say they the people of the book. This book talking to Hebrews said we fight each other all the time. Now I'm not saying we should do it. We shouldn't do it. But by us doing it prove we the people. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Because y'all claim these other people are the people and ain't none of this happening to them. <laughs> so he said you, you dull of hearing. I can't explain. I'm trying to explain but you dull of hearing. Just like right now. Some of them don't want to argue me. You come on my, these knuckleheads come on my page. Y'all said it. And I ain't, give, I ain't bidding you God's speed. Now, if I discern somebody really want to talk and really want to reason, I'm listening. I'm discerning. But if you want to come on here and argue, you argue with this Bible. All right. I ain't going to let y'all make me strike the walk, rock two times like Moses did in Mr. Kingdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we got some hard-head people. So I ain't arguing with none of y'all. Argue with this book. Argue with the change of the priesthood and the change of the law and you trying to teach the law in the honor of Aaron. 
Argue with that. Trying to help you. I love you. Okay, let me close. Okay, let me go right here. I'm going to close in two different books. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Show you this, this in the Torah. In the Tanakh. In the Psalm. So this, this, Paul was right. Don't let nobody tell you Paul didn't know what he was talking about. No, if they say he didn't, they don't know what they're talking about. Deuteronomy 18 verse 15. Here's Moses talking. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. This is a prophecy about Yeshua that was going to come. Shall raise up a prophet in the midst of thee. Of your brethren. He ain't going to be no European. These were not Europeans. I'm sorry, y'all. These was not Chinese. These were not Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern is a made-up construct that the colonizers made up a few years ago. It was, it was Africa. It was East, Northeast Africa. Am I right about that? East Africa. Northeast Africa. They went in there and split it up. And they, 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 they got in over there in Europe and decided to take land from Africa, split it up, and went over there and took that land and cut a Suez Canal in. And, and the Bible said when, when Yeshua come back, he's going to judge the nation for splitting his land. He said, I'm going I'm to get y'all back. That's in the Bible. In the book of Job. I'm going to get y'all back. Because you separated his land, split his land, took his land, took these people's land, enslaved them. And he said, when I come back, I'm coming back with vengeance. Don't y'all be mad. Vengeance is mine. I'm going to get them. So I ain't got to be mad at nobody. That's what the day of the Lord is about. Better read your Bible, folks. They ain't taught this stuff right. So Moses is saying, he said, he's going to raise up a prophet in the midst of thee, of your brethren. And in Hebrews, in chapter 2, he said, he said, it behooved him to be made just like his people. Mm. He looked like them. He got their skin tone. He said, I want to be made just like them in every way. And that's why when he came, the same curses on us fell on him. Amen, amen. He said, I had to take the reproach of them that reproached you. So not only did the curses define us, the curses defined him. Because he said, i got to be made just like him. I'm gonna, uh, the Bible said, cursed is everyone that hang on the tree. That's why he had to hang on the tree. Because he said, the very curses all my brothers had, that's why he was despised. More than anybody. He was hated. He was called named just like his brother. Oh, this book is alive. I'm telling y'all, we've been taught wrong in this book. Not us. Somebody. It says, of your brethren, like unto me. Unto, uh, unto him you shall hearken. And he's telling these Israelites, y'all better listen to him. Y'all getting away with some stuff with me, but y'all better, <laughs> better not mess with this one that's coming. It says, according, now watch this. He's going to raise him up. What verse 16 says? Somebody got that? So don't want to accuse me for reading something in there. Uh, Deuteronomy 18, verse 16. He's going to raise this prophet up. This is a prophecy about Yeshua. He's going to raise him up. Deuteronomy 18. 16, according to all you desire of the Lord in Horeb or Mount Sinai in the day of the assembly said, let him not speak again. What is this book saying? This book, help me, Father. He said, okay, now y'all got to be established right here because this is what y'all missed. Because he said, when I raise Yeshua up, I'm raising him up and he's going to speak only what y'all said so me to stop speaking. What was that? The royal law. The Ten Commandments. He said, I'm going to raise him up, and he's going to come back, and this is going to be his message. Malachi 3, verse 1. He's the messenger of the covenant. What is the covenant? Exodus 34, I think it's 28. The covenant, the Ten Commandments. And what is the Ten Commandments? Practical love. For Yah, for people, and yourself. This is the present law Israelites are supposed to be established in. Try to do all this other stuff if you want to and forget this and you're going to do just like our ancestors. No, that's true. He said, I'm going to raise them up according to all you desire of the Lord God and heard the day of the assembly saying, let him not hear. Let us not hear his voice again. Yeah. So he said, okay, y'all want to hear me? Wait till my son come. He's going to say the same thing y'all told me. Stop saying. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lesson there. Mm -hmm. 
Now, when you go study Yeshua from Matthews all the way when he appeared to John, that was his message. Keep those commandments. Show me where he demanded people to not eat catfish. Not eat, not eat, eat wrong is not right. Can y'all get me there? I'm not telling you to eat wrong now. Because if he tell you what to eat and how to eat, it's healthy. But that ain't the that ain't what he's demanding now. Even though you still, I mean, good sense said, don't eat poison. <laughs> but for salvation and to stand right in, in right standing with him at the judgment, this is what you got to be establishing. What is it again? Go one more time. Uh, uh, Romans 13, verse 8. One more time. I'm going to establish this. This ain't my interpretation. It's what he said. Now go on, be stiff, naked, hard headed. <laughs> Romans 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. Owe no man anything. Anything. But to love one another. But love. For he that loveth another uh -huh. has fulfilled the law. If you walk in this, what he, this present to, truth, you'll fulfill the law. Yeah. And if he tell you to do something else, you yes and amen. If he tell you to go do this, yes and amen. But you can't do yes and amen if you got no, no, no here. Okay. Keep going. But so this is what Israel missed. Go ahead. For this, this, thou shalt not commit adultery. This is love. You won't be committing adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Won't not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Won't steal. Thou shalt Did he say anything about catfish there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point, and I'm still not saying go eat crazy. You, you, you feel me? Y'all feel me? Huh? Bernie's trying to make a point. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a balance. Okay? Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false. Don't bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. Don't covet. Yeah. Same thing y'all said mm -hmm. that they missed. Mm -hmm. That's what got us enslaved, y'all. And these, that's what got everybody hating us. Yeah. This is what our ancestors missed. Come on. If there be any other commandment. If there's any other commandment in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Same thing Paul said over here. He said, <clears throat> hold on to that now. He said over here, he said, uh, the end of the commandment is love. Every law, every commandment, anything he say is motivated by love. Amen. What is love? Keep reading. If there be any other commandment, mm -hmm. it is briefly comprehended in this saying, uh -huh. namely, mm -hmm. thou shalt love thy neighbor, love your neighbor as thyself. As you love yourself. If I love you, I ain't gonna hurt you. It's true. The Christian church said they walking in love and enslaved us. And playing like they ain't did nothing. Amen. Paid everybody reparations and they got to study reparations when they come to us. <laughs> study it. <laughs> y'all playing on our intelligence, but we don't woke up now and we ain't even worried about it because y'all going to make you pay us back and we're going to leave with great substance. <laughs> y'all playing with the wrong one, the most high y'all. You done played us 400 plus years. <laughs> if there's any other command, it's fulfilling this. So that's why I love Brother Holly's ministry, because his ministry is love international fellowship. What is love? What is practical love? Right here. Love. The, okay, the first four commandments: Thou shalt have no other God before him. If you love him, your car ain't gonna be your God. Your wife ain't gonna be your God. Your nation ain't going to be your God. Nobody coming for him. That's love. He's first. The first four commandments, even the Sabbath. They told us the Sabbath is past and gone and it's gone. Yeah, you ain't find that nowhere in the Bible. They taught us that from the Nicene Council and lied to us. The covenant is he established between his people and him as a sign. Now we're going back to honoring the Sabbath. And that don't mean I don't meet other days. Because there ain't no scripture that says if I go back in the temple and worship on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that I'm going to hell. That's another lie Hebrews will tell you. Mm -hmm. But put the Sabbath in its proper place. Mm -hmm. Keep it holy. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, he ain't going to kill you because you go back in the temple. Where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the Hebrews were so mad that they tricked us on the Sabbath. That's why they came up with that doctrine. But don't come up with something ain't written. Is that clear? Yes. Let me, let me, last passage. 
Acts 15, verse 1. Watch this. The apostles, the followers of Yeshua, the ones that set this document in place, that can't nobody change. Here's what they say. And certain men which came down from Judea, these was Israelites, taught the people, the brethren, and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Now they talking to people that already got saved. Then you can't be saved unless you do it this way. See, that's that's applying the law, but not applying it properly. Law is good if you use it lawfully. We see the example right here in the Jerusalem Council. He said, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dis dissension and disputation, what was that? They had a knockdown crack out about this thing. That's what it is. They wasn't debating. Paul was disputing. Dispute means, wait a minute, here's what the scriptures say. I dispute that lie. That's not debating. Mm -hmm. Debating is stuff. Debating is showing who's smart, who the smartest, who got the better argument. That ain't worth a hill of beans. <laughs> they was disputing lies, not debating. Mm -hmm. So it says, and when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension uh, and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas uh, and certain others should go up to Jerusalem. That's these Judaizers, these Hebrew Israelites. Out there. Okay, come on. You got to keep the law. You got to do this. You got to do that. Okay, let's go to Jerusalem. We're going to get this straight. And they went up there and they got straight. <laughs> <laughs> See, when you think you know it all, you're going to find out you don't know what you know. That's why I try to keep myself humble. I'm open to anybody. Prove it. But prove it with scripture. I'll come back on social media and say, that man was right. Let's get this right. That's my spirit. But prove it. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small decision and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go. And these are all Hebrew Israelites, y'all. This is, I promise you, Christianity, and I've messed it both up. These are Hebrew Israelites. And it says, and being brought on their way by the church, they passed through. Pernice, Samaria, declared the conversion of the Gentiles. And these Gentiles are not Hebrews that was Hellenized. I'm sorry, y'all ain't gonna sell that to me. I know better. <laughs> these are Gentiles. Israelites were not called Gentiles. They told us we were Gentiles. We were not Gentiles. It was the Isles of Japheth that was called the Isles of the Gentiles. European. They are the Gentiles. Okay? So let's leave that. Okay, and I ain't arguing with nobody because I, I, I ain't got time to do this lesson. And being brought on the, what, their way by the church, they passed through the, uh, these different, different cities. Big word. <laughs> Y'all can get that later. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these words may be talking. So. <laughs> Declared the conversion of the Gentiles and they, and they uh, caused great joy. And that's in, in the, among the brothers. Watch this. And when they had come to Jerusalem, that the, the Jerusalem church that was given this charge, they were received of the church and of all the apostles and the elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the set of the Pharisees which believed, said that it was needful for you to be circumcised. You can't eat no catfish. <laughs> <laughs> now look, y'all, I, I really don't want you to think I'm endorsing you wrong. I mean, I'm honestly trying to teach you to make a point. Because some of these folk go too far with this stuff they out do, here. They do. they do, I'm telling y'all. Mm -hmm. And please don't leave here telling me that I'm, I'm down in the doctor and all. I'm teaching, y'all. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you, are. <laughs> you really should get away from all that corrupt food they gave us and stuff down there. That's why we have blood pressure, sugar, and all this stuff. Yeah, right. But don't come telling me this salvation. That's what I'm talking about. I'm a defender of the faith. Not a lie. Okay? But they rose up certain of the set of the Pharisees that believed, said that it was needful for you, uh, them uh, needful to be circumcised and, and, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. What is the law of Moses? When the Israelites said, don't let it talk no more, Moses, you go get it and you talk. That's the law of Moses. And so they tried to establish themselves in every time everything Yah told Moses, but they forgot about what Yah told them. Mm -hmm. That was the problem. Wow. Yes. That's why we went back to the change of the priesthood, change of the law, because he said, y'all going to get this. Yeah. Okay? And when 
They had, they had been much disputed. Peter rose up and said to them, men and brethren, you know that a good while ago, God made choice among us uh, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word. That was Cornelius, which was a Gentile, an Italian man. This is not an Israelite. Stop lying. If we Hebrews and we love y'all, why are we twisting his word to satisfy us? I don't agree with that. Even though I love my Israelite brothers, you're not going to sell that to me. Sell that to these young ones. <laughs> some, of the, some of the old people up in Asia know what I'm talking about. Right. These young ones. I haven't been around the block a while. You ain't selling that to me. Y'all will get there after you eat. <laughs> and God, which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, Ruach HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. The Bible, Peter recalled, wait a minute, I went in Cornelius' house, same Holy Spirit fell on us Israelites, fell on these Gentiles. Peter recalled it. And he said, and put no difference between us and them. This is what some Hebrew do not like. This is what God will cuss some people out. But stop cussing. For, I know you're mad. I, Jesus said that some of y'all going to be offended. You're going to wake up and y'all going to be offended. That's what's happening to some of them. And I'm praying for my brother. He's going to fix them. He's going to take care of them. Jesus said some of y'all going to be offended. <laughs> and we're looking at it. <laughs> he said, put no difference between them and us and them. Purifying their hearts by faith. Now watch what they said. And I'm closing. I'm finished. Now therefore, talking to all the Israelites, talking to the people that brought up this issue with the law or the laws that were that they were trying to establish the law when that law was good in its time and it's still good, but in this time that ain't what he told you to do. He told you to establish yourself here in the present truth. And so now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the necks of these disciples which neither our fathers nor us were able to bear. Mm -hmm. If he holds all of us accountable for every single law in the Bible, ain't none of us gonna make it. Right. Hallelujah. Y'all right. say, thank the Father for this these little laws here that is not breathing. <laughs> Y'all say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We love you. We worship you. We love all the things you've said, and we're down in no laws. We're just trying to make the point that you made to the Israelites. We need to get this thing right, because the world is watching us. You told us to be a light to the nation, not a cussing people out nation. You told us to love all men. Yeah, they did us wrong, but you told us vengeance is mine. I will repay. So, Father, we're not bothered and we're not worried and we ain't hating on nobody. I hope I can win many and snatch them out of the fire, hating the garments stained by sin. Father, thank you for this Shabbat fellowship class. Now, before we dismiss, let us fellowship one with another. I want uh, Brother Powell, Jane Powell and his wife, somebody hold that camera for them. Tell us how y'all came to the awakening. And then, if there's one or two more that haven't testified, how did y'all wake up? What, what, how, how you know you Hebrews now? And the reason I'm doing this, Brother Tyrone, watch this. This is happening all over the world. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of Negroes in every nation on the planet waking up hearing the same thing. Y'all church folk think this a call. No, y'all in the call. I ain't say you personally are called. The system that they taught us of religion is a call. All of them. Catholic Church got more blood on their hands than kill more Christians. And they, they, Catholic Church was a part of enslaving us. The people that took our heritage on the ships, yes, they did. And took our heritage, enslaved us, and talking about we're not the people. Now we know better. Who woke us up? The Spirit of the Most High Yah. Isaiah 44 verse 1 now in the verse 5 said I'm going to pour an awakening on them. I'm going to pour my spirit on them and they're going to have dreams and visions and he's going to visit them. He talked to me himself.
Uh, so what, what, I'll, what I'll try to do is give the short version. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so men, men my, my wife and I were uh, at a friend's establishment, and uh, we said we were seated beside two gentlemen that were uh, they haven't been talking about the Bible, and and it wasn't in a positive light. They were were expressing that uh, part of the problem of the world today is religion, which you know he was right. And, and he talked about um, all the things that was wrong with the Bible. He said the Bible was a white man's religion, you know, these types of things. And so on our way home, um, back to the house, my wife, my wife, uh, she asked me, you know, why is it that, uh, why is it that we always at the bottom of the barrel? You know, why is, why is it that things always happen to us? And she had said this throughout our marriage a few times. I've heard her say this, but. You know, that particular day it kind of stuck with me. And uh, you, know, you, you want to have answers, you know, this is my, I want to try to help my wife all I can and, and, and know myself. But it, it stuck with me that day. And uh, so after that moment, uh, every day after that, I just started trying to seek the most high for the answers. Because all the answers in the book. I've heard that forever, ever since I've been in church, ever since I was a kid, you know, all, all the answers in the world. There's nothing to do in the sun, so there must be an answer in there for me somewhere. And um, so I, I started to uh, you know, search the scriptures, and uh, I'm looking on the internet, you know, trying to get some lead on where I should go, uh, praying, and um, I run across this uh, this gentleman on the internet, and uh, I forget the name of his ministry once again. But I read some things, you know. Read some things and, and listen to some things that he talked about, but it still didn't stick with me quite yet. And uh, <clears throat> I kept kept going, kept uh, kept. Uh, I have a, a older daughter, and we bounce things off of each other. You know, she just worried herself, and uh, so we talked back and forth. And I stayed with it for a while. But uh, uh, one day, uh, oh, and let me say this too. Uh, you know, while church was out, you know, this is during COVID, so church is church going on and things like that. So the good part about that for me was that was just me. There's no agenda. I ain't got to study for this or study for that. Just me and the Lord, me and the Holy Spirit. And I'm sitting out in my garage reading my Bible and I'm going through Deuteronomy 28 and I'm seeing all these different things, these curses especially. And the curses didn't match nobody. It didn't, didn't match nobody else. Did it? I grew up around my grandfather. My grandfather was 102 years old when he passed away. And so I feel like I grew up with him sometimes because he told me so many stories. He told me about his mother and father and share property and all those things. So as I'm reading these curses, all this stuff is starting to make a whole lot of sense to me. I'm like, man, this, this is our people. It's like, right? This is our people, right? It, it, No, it never. It didn't, I, I still get blown away every time you just talk about the man to go, and I'm still blown away by it. I don't know. I, I ain't supposed to be. Anyway, that's that's how that's how I was awakened uh, through reading uh, through reading the scriptures. And uh, at this point, I pass the mic to my wife because it kind of happened to us at different times. But I'll let her tell her story. <laughs> About a year ago, um, I just had this dream. I don't know if it was a dream or a vision. And me and my husband were in this in the car. We were driving, driving along. And we got to a stop sign. I saw the stop sign just as clear as day. And there was all these cars just going to the right, going to the right. Then all of a sudden, everything turned black and white. And all the cars that were on the right, on the left side, just kept going. And all the cars on the right side, they just started backing up. And the car that we were in, in that dream, it just veered over to the right. And it stopped, and we just looked at it. And I felt like, you know, then God was just saying that you're on the wrong road. Mm -hmm. And I remember calling my daughter, telling her, I just had this dream. And she was like, Mom, I'll call you back. She's like, I gotta go pray. She was like, that discouraged me. And she's like, are we on the wrong road? So I kept that for a whole year. And I remember asking him, like you said, it's like, why are we so 
you know, people just hate us. They just hate us just because we're, we're us. But they want to be just like us, but they, they hate us. And then he was like, babe, read this right here. And he gave me Deuteronomy 28. And I read it. And it was like the biggest light bulb I had ever seen just turned on in my brain. And it was just like, oh my goodness. This is us. Wow. This is us. That's what happened. And we've been studying ever since just to, to learn, you know, what God wants us to do and uh, how he wants us to do it. Amen. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Now, why all of these years we've been in church and we never saw that? Why? Why are we just waking up now? Because it was a Moses, I mean, uh, it was a Yah told Abraham, he said, your seed going to be in a nation for 400 years. And Isaiah said, they're going to start waking up. Round, round, leading up to the 400 year mark in America and thereafter, so many Negroes woke up at the same time. Why? Why we didn't see this before? That 400 years he talked about. Abraham about it had to be fulfilled. Now, somebody said, well, the 400 years was in Egypt. That was 430 years. God can count. You can't say that was the 400 years. And there's other stuff I can say about that. No, y'all trying to play it all, world. We the people, and we the ones that y'all told Abraham, your seed going to be in a land for 400 years. Trump, Ghana, the United Nations, other people around the world validated us as a 400 year slavery, Jim Crow, suffering. Find another people on the planet that validated like that. Find them. You can. This is the end sign for all you so called church folks that believe this Bible. And I'm not picking at you, I'm just saying you claim you believe it, but this is the only warning you're going to get. All of these Negroes finally waking up. And he waking us all up in our own unique way. My wife and I had the same situation. Before we dismiss, maybe one more person, anybody. In the mouth of two, there was two. Come on, all three witnesses. Let every word be established. But let me share something with you. It's always happening all over the globe. Right. Yes. Every nation on the planet, even in Africa, in the diaspora, is happening everywhere. This is y'all sign. Long, long. Uh, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been saved for almost twenty years, and uh, I was raised in Christian church, but I, uh, but I was saved in Harris County Jail when Hurricane, when Hurricane Katrina hit. Huh? Oh, not Harris County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I got saved when Hurricane, Hurricane Katrina hit in uh, two thousand five. Mm -hmm. That's when the uh, Holy Spirit came into my life. And I've uh, been changed. But uh make a long story short, uh I had when I got out of jail, I had a dream one time and uh that uh ship was going across the ocean. But I didn't know the interpretation of the dream. You know, and uh and uh I think about what about five, six years, you know, uh once I once uh First of all, my brother, my brother uh, Roger Lewis, he passed like uh, two years ago, and he gave me uh, Job chapter thirty, verse thirty, and he said, "My skin is black upon me." Mm -hmm. You know, and the Hebrew Israelites was, was was mistaken for Egyptians. That's right. Paul. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, they, were, they was all mistaken Moses. for Egyptians. Yes. <laughs> you know, so uh, that should that should that should tell you something right there that God's people are people of color. And, and we are, we are not Hamites. We are come, come, come from the line of Shem. That's right. That's right. Amen. That's right. But uh, when I had that dream, I didn't know I didn't know who I was. I wasn't awakened yet because I was in the Christian church. You know, and uh, once I read Deuteronomy chapter 28, 68, uh, that's, hey, that was the interpretation of the dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Right. You know, uh, we, we, are, we are the people of the book. There's no doubt about it. 
we are the people of the book, and God shows us as a nation we have a big responsibility to actually get this word out. That's right. You know, and uh, I'm gonna say this last thing, but uh, Romans three three uh, three thirty one says, "Do we then make the void through law through faith?" Mm -hmm. It says, we "God says no. no, we establish the law." So the only way we're going to keep the law is through the Holy Spirit. That's right. You can't keep the law just through the flesh. That's right. And that's what's wrong with our people. They don't. They don't have the Holy Spirit. Come on, that's right. They not filled. And that's the only way you're going to keep the law is through Christ. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you, you can't keep. You can't keep. You can't keep it through. Because uh, James said, if you break one law, you got to keep all of them. That's right. And just like you said, Apostle, we all we all be going to hell. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Give the most out good angel. Now, we get ready to dismiss, but I want to I wanna uh, say something for social media because some people get irritated when we say we're the people of the book. Why y'all didn't get irritated when them other folks say they were the people of the book and they don't the book don't validate? Them. Why? You on that hate thing, because he said we're gonna be hated by everybody. He said you're gonna be hated all over me and for my name's sake. Why? Because we don't want, our ancestors was the one killing, crucifying, let his blood be on us and our children. That was us. That's why folks hate us. Now we understand. Now we understand why we went on slave ships. But we're not saying we the people of the book because we down in other people. And if you think that and feel that, something wrong in your soul. Now that we know who we are, we humbly say, yes, we are the people. And we still believe all people are important. So stop tripping. Right. Why you ain't hate them? Right. Now they don't find they find all the DNA and everything proving they've been lying all these times. Yeah. But y'all still tripping on the Hebrew Israelites. Right. Right. Y'all say y'all better stop boasting. Father, we thank you for this meeting. We thank you for the people that's here. Uh, any quick questions or comments? On anything I said, or I need to clarify anything before we dismiss, because we're supposed to be dismissing seven. We have a little grace period to get things straight. I would like to meet with whoever is interested in this talk about if we're going to continue this, we just need to do a little talking. And so if anybody interested, after this meeting, we'll meet somewhere and talk a little bit about it. Okay, go ahead. I believe the reason why people get upset about it, because it's said in Baruch, we shall remember ourselves. We're gonna remember. We and see all the book. We share, so that's why we're the whole book, up. the whole Bible, and, and Deuteronomy chapter thirty, verse one down to verse uh, verse five, says that they're gonna be in all the nations of the world where we will scatter when they wake up. Who is that happening to? Nobody but us. So, so the, the, the church world said they believe the Bible, and when the Bible start unfolding itself right before their eyes. They get offended. It don't matter. Huh? It don't matter. It don't matter now, though. They move me. I'm still going to be a mouthpiece. I'm still going to say it. But I ain't saying it like we downing everybody else. Y'all down us. We just say it. We know we've been lied to now. And we know who we are. So stop tripping. Y'all ain't trip with them. You did? Come on. I've been, I've been, put put the camera on her. I, I if you don't mind. I joined Willow Avenue Baptist Church mm -hmm. back in 19... Uh, <laughs> somewhere between 72 and... Somewhere between 74 and 79. Mm -hmm. And I have been... I've lived a lot of places and I'm always... <laughs> Uh, gone to church and I've always read my Bible, but my Bible, the churches that I went to, which is basically Baptist or the ones that say that they're non-denominational, but when you get in there, you know they either came out of Baptist or they came mm -hmm. out of this one or they came out of that. And it never lined up with the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I started uh, meeting with uh, the church in Shreveport, which is uh, the witness league. I met with them for a long time and I really learned more. I didn't learn by myself, but right. I learned more about the Holy Spirit and and uh, the importance of of being poured out and being empty so that God could pour in. Mm -hmm. So I just got to the point where I just didn't go to church. Period. 
So um, my friend and I, who lives in Los Angeles, we pray together on the phone. And we were praying for Trump not to win. <laughs> and for, uh, for the Democrats to not lose the house. And I have a, a cousin that lives back and forth between Freeport and Baton Rouge. And he sent me a, a video of uh, Stephen Darby. Mm -hmm. um, and when I, when I read, his soul. he had blessed a lot of people. When I, when I read that, I knew who I was. I, I could have just shot through the ceiling like a rocket mm -hmm. because it was just that powerful. Mm -hmm. Yes. And ever since, I have just been at peace. I don't worry about anything. And I feel bad about those people who are on the video, you know, cursing and all yeah. that. You yeah. know, we pray for yeah. But they they got a lot of truth, but they angry. Jesus right. said, "God, I'm gonna be offended." I don't feel that prophecy that's being fulfilled. The, that's not of the spirit. Yes, yeah, not, not of the spirit. Of the spirit. So, but when I listen to you, I just hear the word, mm -hmm. and I feel I I hear your challenge. Yeah, I'm challenging. Yeah. I, hear your I love them too. I love them too. Yeah. But come on now, let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot can only last so long. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And I just, you know, and, and, I'm visiting from Sunnyvale, California. Oh, really? Um, wow. And, um, I'm visiting my my uh, my relatives that do. I have okay. a uh, sister in law that lived there. My mm -hmm. brother passed away two years ago. So uh, I heard, you know, that you're going to be here. I said, well, I have to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to all the time. So I just praise the Lord. I just praise God. And you know it's no sense in being mad because yeah. God don't fix it. He gonna fix it. All of your sisters did it. And I do have a question. Okay. That's you know when they say uh, we have to acknowledge our sins of our ancestors. Of our ancestors. Yeah. I, I get you know I can, well, I can you, understand acknowledging. Yeah. But I can't repent for them. Right. I, I follow what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Peter in the third chapter of Acts said, well, he was preaching to the Israelites. He wasn't preaching to Christian or Christianity. I'm not downing them, y'all. I'm just telling you this is what the Bible really is saying. He was talking to the Hebrews that had said, crucify him, let his blood be on us and our children. He said, y'all need to repent. Then he made the statement which was prophetic, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Father. What we all are experiencing is a refreshing we're remembering ourselves. We're waking up. All of us ain't out here lying. Y'all can play it off church world if y'all want to. But in this time of refreshing, we're waking up, realizing we're the people. And we're taking responsibility. Father, we're the people. I'm repenting. And I'm sorry what my ancestors, this is what, how we take responsibility. I'm sorry what my ancestors did to you. I ain't going to do it no more. This is taking responsibility. Hallelujah. How could we take responsibility? Didn't even know we were the people. Hmm. We couldn't. We could. But so, just when I read the Bible, yeah. I, thought was, I, I thought we were uh, Gentiles. Yeah, they taught us that. They, they purposely taught us that. When the book said, they the Gentile. So it was all a trick. If you want to know why they tricked us, Psalms 83. Yeah, I read that. Psalms 83. Tells you about the nations and what they did. America was a part of it. Great Britain. Come on now. All of them. And that's why when he comes back, the Bible said he's going to be so angry with the nations. He's going to wipe them out. And he said, the Bible said he's going to have blood all on his garments. That's vengeance. That's the day of vengeance. But we ain't got the word about it. We ain't got the hate and wish nothing on nobody. Our job is to be a light to everybody and try to say to everybody, y'all welcome in the family. You just not welcome coming in whitewashing it and lying to us anymore. That ain't welcome no more. We know better. Brother, come close us out in prayer. And we'll dismiss and maybe we'll talk out in the lobby if we get a chance. Thank y'all for coming. Blessings to all of you. Abaya, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the Sabbath day. Thank you for us having time of fellowship with, with the chosen of the Most High. Come under, under your word and hear your word and be filled with your word and filled with your spirit. I just speak a special blessing on everybody here today, Father, that you will fill their life up with your full truth, the full counsel of